Hello says friends, welcome to the channel. Today it's day one of the FIDE World Cup 2019. But what is it this World Cup? The tournament is part of the 2019-2020 World Championship cycle. The tournament is 128 players knockout where both finalists will qualify for next year's candidate tournament. Eight players will play the candidate tournament to challenge Magnus Carlsen in the World Championship match, of course. And uh, this, uh, among these eight players, two spots will go to the two finalists of this World Cup. Then other two players are the first two players of the Grand Prix and four others. Among these four others, Caruana has his place as former challenger. Ding will probably play the candidates because he's currently number three in the rankings. One spot is for a wild card, and the last player will be the winner of next month's FIDEChess.com Grand Swiss. Wesley So is one of the top players that must fight to enter in the candidates, and so he must fight to win the World Cup, or at least to enter into the final. That's why we are going to watch together his first game against the international grandmaster Sergio Duran Vega from Costa Rica. Let's start with the game. Wesley Saw with the white pieces opens with c4, the English opening, a perfect opening to show his strategic superiority. Duran Vega answers with e5, here comes g3 and knight to f6, bishop to g2, d5, the push in the center, c captures, knight captures, and Wesley Saw continues with knight to c3. Now, this knight with the help of the bishop are attacking twice the central knight of Duran Vega. Moving back the knight is one of the best ideas because he changing the knight here on c3 only favors white. So knight back to b6, knight to f3, knight to c6, and short castle for white. Bishop to e7, d3 now, opening the way for the dark square bishop. And what about this uh, opening line? Wesley saw already won many important games with this opening line against Anish Giri, Ganguly, and also Topalov. But uh, well, he, he also played the black side of this opening and he lost one recent game against Ding in June 2019. So this uh, opening line, he knows it very well, but uh, can be tricky for black. So after d3, here comes short castle for black and bishop to e3, rook to e8, rook to c1 of course, starting to control the safe open c5, bishop back to f8 to give the file to the rook, and bishop to g5 attacking the queen following ding winning strategy. f6, the bishop moves back to e3, here comes bishop to e6, and because this knight has nowhere to go, the knight moves back to d2. And here comes rook to b8, this is the point where Duran Vega plays a novelty. This is a good move, Wesley Saw played queen to d7, that is another good move. Now the game is completely original. The knight completes his maneuver knight to b3. Now queen to c8 is a bit passive. Bishop to g5, with the idea of changing the good or at least the important uh, dark square bishop for black. Bishop to h3, same idea, the idea is to change this strong uh, bishop in fiancetto of the white player. And this is a good move. Bishop captures on h3, queen captures on h3, and here comes knight to b5, threatening to capture on c7. There are many ways to protect this pawn. Black continues with Queen back to c8, protecting the pawn. Again, this c8 square is not the best square for the queen, but now it's not only a matter of activity, there is also a little tactical shot that Wesley so can play. So here comes knight captures the pawn on a7, the knight recaptures, but here comes bishop captures on b6. This pawn is pinned because can't capture or the queen is lost, so Wesley so is a pawn up. Knight back to c6, now this bishop must move away, bishop to c5, and queen back to h3. This move is not a mistake, but doesn't add anything to black's position. Much better to improve the position of one of these two rooks, rook to d8 for example, rook to a8 
it's another good move. Also, king to h8, so it's impossible or it will be impossible for white in future to give check. These are all uh, better alternatives. After queen, uh, after queen to h3, bishop captures on f8, rook recaptures and knight jump to c5. Luckily, there is the queen that is controlled in d7, if not there is the knight jump with the fork winning the exchange. Here comes king to h8, e3 now. Of course, not only white is a pawn up, but also is better. Knight back to e7 and rook to c4. This is a clever move. Not only the rook is controlling this fourth rank, so there is also the option of uh, uh, changing the queens, but also another option is to double the heavy pieces on the c file. Here comes c6. Queen to g4 is forcing black to e change the queens. Queen captures, rook captures, and now there is really a problem if black doesn't do anything with the knight jump forking the rooks. So rook in f goes to d8, at also attacking d3, and Wesley so continues with rook to d1 protecting the pawn. Rook to d5 attacking the knight, rook to c4 protecting the knight, and here comes good move, rook to a8 on the semi-open file attacking a3. Rook to b8, this is a good move, because not only is attacking the rook, if the rook will capture, uh, the knight will move away from the rook's attack. So, rook to b8, because black uh, is worse, so it doesn't want to change pieces now. And knight back to b3, and we notice that all of white pieces are controlling the future d4 push. So, black doubles the rook on the d file, here comes rook to f1 and king to g8. So it seems that black could capture, let's go back one more, it seems that black could capture this pawn. Why Duran Vega doesn't capture on d3? Because it would be a terrible mistake. Let's watch what happens. If now rook captures on d3, rook captures, rook captures, now the back rank is completely unprotected, rook to a8 we check, and the only move is to bring back the knight, knight to g8, but the knight is pinned, king to e2, not only attacking the rook, but this move that comes with tempo is completely protecting the second rank, so rook back to d7, and black is playing without the knight, rook to a7, pinning now b7, Rook to e7, where at least the rook is under the protection of the knight, but here comes knight to a5, g6, rook captures, and this uh, position is already enough to win, is more than plus 4, and why is so strong? Because not only white is a pawn up, but with a far pass pawn, also connected, a better knight, and a better king, because he's more in the center, and with the chance to change the rooks when he wants. So, plus 4. So let's go back to our game. We said after king to f1, good idea by black not to capture. In fact, Duran Vega continues with king to g8. Here comes king to e2. Not only a good central position for the king, but now the king is also protecting the rook on d1, so there is no problem of uh, pinning this pawn. So king to f7, and here comes d4. This is the perfect moment to push this pawn. Black can't do much. Here comes knight to f5, and Wesley so con and why this move? Because this move is another protection against d4. So of course now white can't capture because two rooks against the rook on the one. But this move is not a problem for white. Wesley so continues with f3. Of course, the simple idea is to play the fork with e4, but let's go back one move, after knight to f5, rook to a7 is even stronger. In fact, e captures here on d4 doesn't work, let's watch what happens. Here comes rook captures on b7, we check. King to g6 is the best move, and now e4 works even without f3. Let's go back, after rook to a7, if this rook moves to d7, here comes not e4, that is not the best move, because let's watch what happens. Comes knight captures on d4, we check, knight captures, and rook captures, rook captures, e captures, 
Here comes b4, white is still better because of the active position of the king and the rook, and with this minority, it will ruin the structure here on the queen side. But there is still a lot to play. So going back to rook in 8 goes to d7. Best move now is knight to c5 attacking the rook. Not only attacking the rook, also controlling b7. So rook to e7, rook captures on b7, and white is winning. But let's go back to our game. We said after knight to f5, Wesley so doesn't want to remove this rook that is, that is another control on d4, and he continues with f3 with the simple idea of playing e4. Here comes e captures on d4, e4 now forking rook and the knight, how to uh, move out of this terrible fork with rook to e5, pinning the pawn that now can't uh, uh, capture because he's pinned to the king, king to f2 and pins the pawn, so the knight must move back, knight to e7, here comes rook captures on d4, and rook captures, knight capture, this is the best recapture, because now the rook is still controlling this important file, and at will, will move to a7. Here comes f5, of course this is uh, uh, one of the few counterplays that uh, uh, black can think of. Rook to a7, best move, f captures, and rook captures on b7. This move, this capture, is pinning the knight. So here comes king to f6, that unpins this knight. Let's go back one move. What happens if now uh, e3 will check? Nothing much, because after king to e2, now king to f6 and a4, this is still winning for white. Going back to our game, we said that uh, Duran Vega plays king to f6 to unpin the knight. Here comes rook to b6, now the target is c6, e captures on f3, and knight captures on c6, there is the terrible threat of the knight discovery with the rook check, and it's clear that white will win the game here on the queen side. Rook to e2 we check doesn't solve the problem, because the king will capture on f3, rook captures on h2, but this idea even if it's one of the few things that black can try, doesn't work because there is no time to prepare a counter-attack here on the king side. White, in fact, is completely free to advance here on the queen side. Now what happens? It happens that Wesley Saw, who is much better here in this position, he changed the last piece. Knight captures on e7, we check. Only one rook remains on the board. King captures, and here comes a4. In this position, black resigns. Why? Because uh, this is a dominating position that white will simply win. But let's uh, briefly watch together a possible continuation. What to do? This rook can't do anything because b2 is protected by this rook. This rook is also cutting off the king, so uh, the best idea for black is to move the king to protect the queen side. So, king to d7 is a possible idea, but here comes rook to b7, we check that we win g7. King to c6, rook captures, rook captures on b2, and it seems that now this side of the board is lost. Yes, this is true, but now the king is completely, not, not completely, but is far from the king side, this is the pawn that uh, later will win the game. So, rook captures, rook to a2 behind the pass pawn, and before this rook is able to bother the king's advance, here comes king to f4. Rook captures on a4, we check, doesn't mm, worry, we will not worry white, because the king is already in front of the pawn, king to g5, rook to a5 we check, and the king moves on the same rank of the black kings. So what to do? Rook to a4 is one of the main ideas, trying to stop the pawn advance. But here comes rook to g7, and this pawn is free to advance. So king to d6, let's try to activate the king, but the pawn moves to g4. Now rook to f4 we check, king to g5, still protecting the pawn rook to f1 trying something or behind the pawn or some horizontal checks king to g6 
the pawn with all the advance and will promote. King to e5, and here comes rook to e7 with check. King to d6, attacking the rook. Rook to e3, and you notice how the bridge is already completed. Rook to f4, g5, rook to a4, now uh, trying to give problems uh, from the ranks. King to g7, rook to a7 we check, and king to h6. Rook to a1, there comes g6. Rook to h1 we check, only uh, present a tempo to white because the king will move to g7. So the rook will move behind the fast pawn. But here comes king to g7, and now the bridge is complete. The rook will move to one of these uh, fights and uh, will protect the king and the pawn that will promote to queen. So I hope that uh, you liked this uh, solid first game by Wesley So. I have some other games uh, still from round one that uh, are almost ready and that I plan to show you tomorrow. If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. For now, I thank you very much for watching and see you tomorrow. Goodbye.